Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news and updates on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hadfield, and as always, I'm joined by Max Scoville, host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. Howdy. Hello there. And Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Always a pleasure, Damon. Always a pleasure. And we have a very special guest this week, Taylor Lyles, who is IGN's tech editor, joins us. Welcome, Taylor. Thank you for having me. Hey guys, and I'm excited to talk about today. Like we got yeah, a lot of cool stuff we're talking about. We're, sh we're sharing our picks for the best accessories for both, play both PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. And I know um, Taylor will have a lot of uh, helpful picks in that arena. So I know that both of these consoles are pretty, well, they're a lot easier to find out in the wild these days than there were just even a few months ago. Max, let's start with the PlayStation 5. If someone were picking up a, a PS5 today, what would you say is the most important accessory they should add to it. You know, I think the, the my biggest complaint about the PlayStation 5 is the, well, it's actually a tricky one. There's, there's two things that I have a complaint about. There's the hard drive <laughs> space, which is advertised as, what, it's like eight, 875 gigs, but it's 120 of those are dedicated to system memory. So you're, you're really left with about 600 gigs, which is a noticeable step down if you had a PlayStation Pro, which was sizably bigger. So getting a getting a hard drive to upgrade is, is a, kind of a huge go-to there. And there's, there's definitely some options out there. Um, but I think, what do we have, like our go-to one? Taylor, do you have a specific recommendation? Yeah, I would say a, like a, a SSD, I would say the Corsair. Uh, I believe it's the MP600 Pro LPX. It's pretty cheap. I believe the one terabyte right now is on sale for $85. It usually wow. costs about 140 I believe. So that's, that's a pretty good cost effective solution. That's awesome. Because like, honestly, like that's sort of, it's a great, it's a great hard drive. It's a wonderful machine that can do cool things with it, but you know, you run out of space pretty quickly and there's a lot of, you know, installing and uninstalling going on there. Uh, the other thing, obviously, is the battery life on the DualSense, which is, again, wonderful mm -hmm. controller. I wish it lasted a little bit longer. So a good fix there is obviously to get a backup and then a uh, charging dock. So the, um, what is it? The yeah, I believe it's the Power A Twin charging station is the one that IGN recommends. This is neat. There's also, this is a new, a new thing to consider, um, but the getting a charging cradle for the, the, uh, the VR, was it VR Sense? the new controllers for the, for the VR mm -hmm. headset, um, because those, sadly, uh, you need to have both of them when you're, when you're using them, and uh, they each need their own dedicated USB-C cable, so it's kind of, uh, kind of key to you know, have those both charging at the same time. The, the Sony, the, the first party Sony one, they actually sent one of those over, and there's a really gorgeous little, uh, very futuristic looking kind of little dock you can put them both into, and they click in there nicely, and it looks very space age. Uh, you still kind of have to toss the headset on just, on there, there's not really a dedicated stand for that unless you buy one separately, but that's a, that's a nice option there. Uh, my personal kind of actual like life-changing thing that I bought for my PS5 is a wall mount, which seems, seems stupid, but uh, I have a toddler, and so having a large glowing humming thing at, you know, grabbable level, not great. So I just have it up, you know, high up on a wall, kind of mounted on a stud, and it's, uh, it, it honestly just looks like I just glued the thing to the wall. It's completely invisible. It's so a little screw on the bottom that holds it in place. So it's, that's, a, that's a nice uh, thing that I would recommend, especially if you've got kids or just want minimalist what, setup. What did you do about the power cable and HDMI cable? I have like the, those like plastic runner things that you can use to sort of yeah, yeah. hide them. Yeah. Sure. Perfect. Okay, Ryan, same question. Someone picks up an Xbox Series X today. What's the one accessory they should pick up with it? Well, I... <laughs> And we on the Xbox side, we've got more hard drive space to to work with out of the box. But I still also <laughs> recommend additional storage. Games are huge. You know, it's like you got a couple of Call of Duties on there. If you're playing Warzone, you're playing whatever this year's Call of Duty game is, and you're done. So, yeah, the Seagate uh, expansion card is uh, unfortunately the only way to go on Xbox. So the upside is it's really easy. It's literally plug and play, just like the you know, the memory cards of, of yesteryear, but uh, the price for a one terabyte is way more than that $85 sale price that Taylor just mentioned for the, the PS5 uh, storage that of course, yeah, you gotta, you gotta do a little DIY work to get it in there as opposed to just plugging and playing like you do with the, the Seagate drive here for Xbox. But uh, yeah, it is just doubling up to two terabytes, which I have on mine has been a real uh, just, lifestyle improvement in that I just I haven't really had to worry about it at all in the first I mean I, I have deleted a few games here and there I do a little maintenance I don't mm -hmm. just leave everything installed 
But by and large, it's just, yeah, two ter the difference between two terabytes and one uh, with these consoles really is pretty significant. So that's, that's number one for me. And then uh, maybe a little less of a need, but it is really great is the new Xbox Elite controller. I mean, that is, mm. I, I definitely recommend it. If you are a power core gamer that's watching this, then you'd probably benefit. Uh, you'd probably get, get your money's worth out of the Elite controller. So um, yeah, those are, and at least those are reasonably priced in the sense that you can, they sell the controller just by itself now and then the accessories separately if you don't want those. So just the controller is a little more affordable than it was last gen. So uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it's, it's just a really nice, I mean, the, the build quality is great. The, the grip textures are great. The, uh, the triggers feel really good. They're adjustable as well. And they're, it's just a, Microsoft did a great job on this. And uh, unlike the stock controller that has, uh, of course, double A batteries, this does have a built-in battery, but unlike the DualSense, it actually lasts a while. So they've, they've at least put a big enough battery in it yeah, I was, to I was make it not a problem. The, the sort of up, upgraded PS5 controller is the, the DualSense Edge, which yeah. sadly, they didn't upgrade the battery side of it. I think it's typically made for people who don't want any input lag. It's got like a very complicated way of locking in a cable to keep it charging. Um, but if you're just concerned with like longer gaming sessions, that might not be a huge step up in that area. Uh, as for storage, isn't it possible to also get like a, an external hard drive that you can use to sort of back stuff Only, up, but not? You, yeah, it's got to be. You can't play new games off of off of that. Is the short version. You can keep all your back compatible, backwards compatible stuff on there, uh, but you need you need the high speed. Uh, you'll need the, mm. the the card, the Seagate card, in order to play new stuff at with the high with good loading times, with that that are promised out of the box. Because yeah, it's. Uh, you, it's it's more of a the external storage is more of kind of a a library it's like a it's like a like your back right, right. your back catalog is really what so that's good bottom, for bottom bottom drawer games that kind yeah, of thing yeah exactly hey look, can you speak to why the uh, the Seagate expansion card for Xbox is so much more expensive than the Corsair for PS5 yeah absolutely uh, short answer it's the only option you have. I mean, yes, like they were just talking about earlier, you can buy a hard drive, but it's only for like backwards compatible games. You can't run any of the newer games that are designed for the Series X or S on that. But with the Seagate expansion card, yes, it is expensive. It's also the only option. If I recall, it is proprietary and there are some, there's like a 512 gig option. And then I do believe there's also the two terabyte option, but still even at 512, still a pricey option. But if the Series X or S is your only console in your household, it makes sense to get one. I personally don't have one, but also you can see a PS5 in my background. So, but uh, for people who just have just an Xbox, whether an X or S, it does make a lot of sense to get this just because a lot of these games take a lot of storage. And it's just a, a good thing to have so you don't have to constantly pick and choose which games you want to uninstall. I, I definitely do not. I don't recommend the 512 card like because these things are ridiculously expensive, which again, I'm not... I am not in support of. It's lame that they're, they're as much as they are, but if you're gonna spend the money to get one of these storage expansion cards for Xbox, go with the one terabyte, or you know, if you want to spring for the two, you could, but I, I think the, the one is the sweet spot. In for a penny, in for a terabyte. Basically. Uh, one thing about Xbox that I think is really, I mean, this, this applies to PlayStation 2, but uh, we're able to kind of like, you know, preload games and, you know, pre-schedule updates, which is really nice. And I've, been, I've kicked myself so many times when I haven't had enough hard drive space free and there's a game that I have like, you know, pre-installed or tried to have it queued up or it's be like, get this, get this day one, get it when it's ready. And then I just, I get home and it's like, oh, I've got to wait 45 minutes to install something because I didn't clear out enough space. So more hard drive space doesn't hurt. And Taylor, what, was there, what, what are your personal picks for the best accessories for these, for both platforms? Yeah, I would, you know, I would concur with both of them. I would definitely say the PlayStation 5, definitely get an SSD, uh, the games, uh, it takes a lot of storage, especially if you're installing a lot of games like I do. Uh, I personally recommend for most people to just get an SSD with a heat sink installed, like the one we mentioned that Corsair one does. Uh, but if you want to save even a little bit more money, you could just buy a straight up M.2 SSD and then manually install your own heat sink. I know a lot of people don't really want to do that. I know a lot of people are already nervous about trying to crack open their PS5 just to install it. But... SSD, regardless, doesn't really matter which one you go with. If you want the most cost-effective solution with the heatsink, go with the Corsair MP600 Pro LPX. And for Xbox, I would recommend the Seagate uh, storage expansion card, but if you are pretty 
uh, liberal with in uninstalling games after you're done playing with them, I would probably say grab the Elite uh, Series 2 controller. There's the, the Elite mm -hmm. Series 2 Core that came out pretty recently. It's cheaper, and if you just want to buy the parts after the fact, you can do that as well. And it's on the Xbox Design Lab, too, so you can, ins you can customize your very own Elite 2 controller and add a little more personal flair to your setup. Now, I'm surprised no one has mentioned the headsets. I think both their first party headsets for both platforms, I think, are awesome and relatively affordable. I think they both come in under 100 bucks. Those, yeah. are, those are the accessories I use the most personally for each platform. Yeah, good call, Damon. I mean, I, I, I am using that as well at home. It's nice for after my wife and kid go to bed. Uh, I'll throw that on and, and uh, be as loud as I want with the headphones. And, and I yep. like that it's just got the integrated chat microphone, too. So And the battery life on it seems pretty good. And then it's just a nice, it's a USB-C charge, so it does, does top up pretty quick if you, if you need it to. The sound quality is not great. Uh, with my PS5, I'm actually using a set of Astro A50s that, that I just had, and those sound amazing by comparison. Those, are, those sound way, way better than this Xbox headset, but it's, it's good. It's just not great. So, you know, but it's also, like you said, Damon, it's, it's only like 100 bucks. So it's, you know, it's walking that line between affordability and, and good quality sound. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a solid one, but you could probably, you know, shop around on, on some different options there as well. Yeah, the Pulse headset is gorgeous. I actually don't have one. I had sort of the one of the dedicated PS4 headsets a while ago, which I uh, managed to brick by losing the dongle, which is a very stupid oh, no. thing you can do. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. Something I do appreciate about sort of Sony hardware is that Sony is first and foremost a consumer electronics company. And so generally mm -hmm. speaking, if you say within the Sony ecosystem, uh, the stuff all plays pretty well together, which is really nice. A buddy of mine actually got the opposite of a, a nice uh, compact headset, which was instead just one of those enormous um, multi-point surround sound, uh, you know, Sonos Atmos setups. Uh, and he, he showed me Demon Souls running on it, and it was a little bit frightening, you know? It, it's, it's always a kind of a good kick in the ass to get, like, a proper sound setup going. Um, but I think a, a Pulse headset's probably the cheapest way of going about that. I will. You reminded me of one. There is one cool little thing that, that uh, I like on the, the Xbox headset. It's got Bluetooth, so I actually pair it to my phone also. So depending on the setup, I've, I can have Discord going on through my phone into my ear and have game audio if I'm like doing party chat with somebody via Discord. So that's a, that's a nice little sort of two-for-one on the Xbox headset. What a time to be alive. Uh, one more thing for Xbox I did want to mention, if any of our viewers did want to go with a rechargeable battery, iGen recommends the Razer Universal Quick Charging Stand. It provides a rechargeable battery for your controller and a stand for you to set it on. Very convenient way to um, top it off every time you need to, and that one is only about 30 bucks, I believe. Not too, not too expensive. So those are the actual like, useful accessories we recommend, but in doing some research, we also found some unusual or surprising accessories that are out there, especially on a place like Amazon. One that really stood out to me, both of these consoles have like cooling solutions in accessories. So there's this, they have very long titles. There's this PS5 stand suction cooling station with an AC adapter. And I hope we pulled uh, some images. Is it Nyko? It, it looks pretty wild. I don't think this is even Nyko. I think this that's is, who, we're they, beyond yeah, Nyko. They, they had a crazy one in the 360 days. I don't know if this is the exact one, but yeah, it's like, these are they're like whole stands that you set your, your PS5, the whole unit into. And then it claims to cool it by, you know, either blowing air into it or help facilitating the air that's coming out of it. I don't know how, how necessary this is. Um, it also charges your controllers, which is nice, and has storage for 12 games that you can pop your games in there. However, this thing has over 12,000 reviews on Amazon with a four and a half star rating. So I don't know. It's, th there's also a very similar one of these for the Xbox series. A lot going on there. I think, the, had, I think the people who designed this thing need to cool it. I have yeah. not heard a single... No pun intended. I haven't heard of any overheating issues on either of these two consoles that would deem this like a really necessary or useful product. Yeah, both of mine are inside my little in entertainment center and I haven't had any issues. Yeah. Taylor, same. are you aware of this, of this device or similar devices? Yes. Um, I remember we were doing a video for our Budget of Best series and it was mm -hmm. the best accessories and we were just kind of spitballing ideas. And I went down quite the rabbit hole on Amazon looking yeah. <laughs> for accessories. And I, 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 again, with what you guys were saying earlier, I just, I feel like these base stations, they're, they're cool. I think it certainly organizes things. I see you can put a few games on there, has a little section for that. But I feel like it's doing a little too much. And I just, feel, overall, I just don't like 
accessories like that, especially ones that say they you can cool your console. If your console's having overheating issues, I feel like that's more of a manufacturer issue, not necessarily something that needs a third party yeah. solution. Yeah, I mean, the whole reason the PS5 is so enormous is because it's supposed to be good at cooling itself. I mean, the, the nice thing about that base is that it also, it, you know, will keep your PlayStation sturdy upright, and you can also charge the controllers, and uh, I, I probably wouldn't go for one, but it is sort of nice to have, like, an all-in-one little kiosk to put all your stuff on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It seems like a solution in search of a problem to me. I think it's if you're if you're really if you're really nervous about shelling out five hundred bucks on like a brand new machine and you don't want it to overheat, you're going to shell out an additional fifty bucks on a thing that'll really make sure it doesn't overheat. Another one I found is this dust cover net for PS Five with an RGB LED light strip. So this dust cover is basically like you lay it over the top of your PS Five if it's upright, presumably, and it's supposed to keep dust and like pet hair from getting caught and trapped inside your PS5. And there are several different colors that it comes in. It comes in five different colors. $40. Uh, you know what else keeps your pet hair out of your console? <laughs> of vacuuming your house. Vacuum. Putting them up for adoption, <laughs> whichever. Uh, no, There's no reviews on this either. This is, this is so funny yeah, because if you're, done, yeah. if you're concerned about your thing overheating, this is, if anything, going to make it, it's going to block the ventilation. Uh, and then flip side, the entire reason yeah. you can take the, the, the blades off is so you can vacuum out the inside of your PS5. They, that, before the system was even out, the Sony put up a video being like, here's how easy it is to clean the inside of it. Uh, so that's, yeah. I don't know. Clean, your, clean your house, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, what is the, what's the X screen for Xbox Series S? Who can speak to that? Ooh, I am glad you asked, Damon. So I reviewed this last year. Uh, essentially, it's just an accessory for the Xbox Series S. Uh, you connect it to it, uh, and it just basically makes it a portable display. It looks like a laptop-like design. Obviously, it's not a laptop, but if all the TVs in your house are preoccupied, you just pop that sucker in and you can start playing it. It's powered through the console itself. It's not, at, it's not like uh, 4K, but of course, if you're buying a Series S and expecting graphical fidelity, I don't know what to tell you. It's got a 1080p IPS display. The volume on the outside is kind of a bummer, uh, which is why it's really great to have a headset in this case. But if you are looking for to bring it on the go, I personally brought it with me once and I brought it through TSA uh, PreCheck. And I was like, oh, wow, this is like super convenient. And then I was just waiting. I had like a, like, um, a delay of flight. So here I am playing Halo Infinite at BWI Airport. And it was wonderful. I didn't have to use X, like XCloud or anything. I was just like, oh, it was natively played on my Series S. I'm glad you that threw in awesome. a useful accessory here, Damon, at the, <laughs> at the end of this segment. This, this is actually useful. It's about, you know, if you've got a Series S, this is great. I was going to say a good accessory for this is the Series S. This just, this just makes me want to buy a Series S just for this little setup. It, it reminds me of the old, um, the old PS1, the little tiny yes. one that yes. had a whole screen on it. Mm -hmm. This is so, I yeah. think a buddy of mine had a similar setup for a PS4 which he would, he would take on the go and just plug it in in hotel rooms. And it's, if you travel a lot, this is a, a great solution. Uh, it's a, a little silly, but I think it's, I think it's neat. I mean, it's it's really weird cute. because when I first got, yeah, it's really cute. When I, when I first uh, set it up and connected it to my Series S, I was shocked. It looks like a first party accessory. I think, uh, I think the Upspec Gaming did a really good job with the design and really integrating it with the console because it could have easily sticked out like a sore thumb. And as you can see from the B-roll footage, it still has access to that storage expansion card if you use it. And then of course the power outlet because you need to power both the devices for it to function. But overall, it's a, it's a great accessory. And if you travel a lot, uh, like me sometimes, it's, a, it's great to have. But also I have a Series X, but the Series S is now my, tr my little travel buddy. Well, there you have it. I know more PS5s and Xbox Series Xs and Ss are making their way to new homes all the time, so consider this your little shopping guide on what accessories you might want to pair with your new next-gen console. We've got the results of last episode's poll. We were talking about uh, Starfield and Spider-Man 2. It seems like they're going to be going up against each other this fall. We asked you, our dear viewers, what fall 2023 game are you most excited for? And Spider-Man 2 just narrowly edged out Starfield. Spider-Man at 48%, Starfield at 41%. So these games, you know, even with our audience, even with our audience, which is historically, they leaned a little bit more towards PlayStation. This is a very close, very close game between uh, those two games. Taylor, what, what's your most uh, anticipated fall 2023 game? Starfield. Starfield, even. Yeah. Well, and you could, you're going to be able to play that on the go in, uh, in an airport. Yeah. <laughs> in your Series S. Very cool. Uh, a new poll for you to vote on for next episode. What do you think is the most essential PS5 or Xbox accessory? Is it a controller charger, an SSD, a headset? Make sure to vote at IGN.com. We'll share the results with you next week. And that's going to do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. 
Thank you to both Ryan and Max. Thank you to Taylor for being our very special guest today. Thank you to everyone working behind the scenes in our LA and San Francisco studios to make this episode possible. My name is Damon. We'll be back next week with more PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news. We'll see you then.